Hey everybody, so I want to go over cash flow. If you learn nothing else from all these trainings, everything I'm putting out there, know that cash flow is the most important part of your business. Aside from your people and your clients, if you don't have cash flow, you don't have a business. If you don't have cash flow, you can't operate. So cash flow, maintaining it, doing things the right way is vital to keeping your business running the right way to growing, to scaling, and to avoid a lot of the issues that most entrepreneurs come up with. So <clears throat> what I've decided to do is I want to give a breakdown of some people that we've had strategy sessions with to kind of review their cash flow so you get a better idea. And this way it helps you to, you know, maximize your cash flow, consistently increase your cash flow, and keep the right type of cash reserves. So no matter what type of financing program you want to get into, you can. And <clears throat> so you don't run into any issues. Because what happens is when people mismanage cash flow, they hurt their credit. Right around the point where they're starting to feel the mismanaged cash flow, they're going to go out and apply for financing, which is also the worst time to do it. Uh, but sometimes you can fix it. Sometimes you can't uh, because their credit's deteriorating. The cash flow is deteriorating and the types of programs you'll qualify for is way less. That's why it's very, very important to understand this, to take this into account and to set up everything the way I'm going to teach you. So this doesn't happen to you. And I also want to make a side note here that a lot of people have read uh, Profit First and the Profit First system. And I am strongly recommending against that. Uh, emphatically. The reason I say that is because there's too many moving pieces and you wind up hurting yourself when you apply for equipment financing. The only thing that doesn't really get hurt when you're applying for it is an SBA loan. Everything else, because of how the profit first system works, lines of credit, equipment, anything, and you're constantly moving around with cash, is actually hurting you when you go and apply for different types of finance. The other thing I want to say about it is it's comp it's a little bit more complex and when you set that up now you have anywhere from five to eight different bank accounts and by you having that many bank accounts you're paying a lot more banking fees it's just not worth it so when you set up your business bank account or if you have it set up that way don't worry but i would definitely advise you to just have a business checking and a business savings everything else can get worked out quarterly monthly around tax time do not set up seven bank accounts multiple payment processing accounts either and i've seen that before because that will hinder your cash flow all right this is all about cash flow i want to show you guys what we look at what banks look at and then i'm going to give you guys some best practices so please please watch this multiple different times because this can be the one thing that saves your business helps your business grow helps you scale and gets you into the type of business you deserve deserve and you've been working however many years to achieve. All right, so what I wanna do, I wanna share my screen and kind of review some of these uh, items. So you're gonna see, we're gonna go through business strategy sessions. Now, our cash flow analysis looks somewhat similar to this, but also a little bit different uh, because ours has certain colors and it's a little bit prettier, but this is the main information that you get when you do a strategy session. And if you decided to do the entire package, you're gonna get a strategy session that's gonna review this. Okay, so in the upper left-hand corner, the first thing I want us to look at is, obviously I took out names, right? I want this confidential, all of our clients is confidential. It's basically the same, in my mind, it's the same type of attorney, client privilege or patient doctor privilege when you work with us. So this person has a 678 credit score. That's good for a line of credit, good for equipment financing, can't go SBA with that. The next thing I wanna note is their business credit is 60 out of 100. It's okay, it's decent. Uh, the fact is it's built and that's what matters here. Uh, traditionally, we do a soft credit pull and we do a soft business credit pull. And we analyze that, we send that to our to our people in our strategy sessions along with this sheet so if you look here this is a restaurant first thing i want us to look at is column b in deposits so 
Deposits in January, 52, 51, 51. They average 51 deposits. Super consistent. All right, that's a very, very good sign. Anytime you have some, have over 10 plus deposits, it shows you have a, a greater uh, number of clients and it actually lowers your risk score. The higher the deposits like this, a restaurant 52 is great. Uh, what you don't want to see is, let's say, less than less than eight. Less than eight is challenging when you go for a line of credit sometimes. Now, the next thing is the deposit amount, okay? If you look here, so this looks like they have an average of 70 over the last six months. Um, and basically what I will tell you is sometimes if it's a seasonal business, we always ask for 12 to see seasonality. Now here, you see 64, 74, it's basically all the same. And then January, they had a great month, 98,000, okay? so. This is how much sales this business did. And as you can see, it looks like it's increasing. Now we go to negative days. You never want negative days. You never want overdrafts. If, if you go through a strategy session, we actually have overdrafts and negative days. In the last six months, they've only had one negative day. And then the next thing we look at is average uh, bank balances, okay? We also, there's a different one that we look at now that goes into uh the ending balance that's important because we never want a business that ends negative in fact that will make most programs challenging to get into uh but there's ways around that uh but i just want to kind of show you guys this stuff though first average bank balance they're averaging about 8700 bucks now if you can see 37 is on the lower end so it looks like they're running out which is probably why they're applying for an sba loan the other thing I'd like to point out is you should always keep between five and 10% at least in the business operating account. That's not to say the savings account, but the business operating account. So if this person's averaging 70,000, you want at least 3,500 to 7,000 in the account at all times. That is good cash flow management. If you keep more, even better. But I'm saying from a bare minimum standpoint, that's what you want. Okay. A couple other numbers here to note. Projected gross annual is about 850. I believe this business is right on pace with that. And then some of the other things we get into is are there any merchant cash advances? Uh, and yes, they're paying on deck 818. We try to avoid MCAs because they do hurt cash flow. And we want to try to consolidate, pay them off, get into an SBA or a line of credit or better programs to help the business. If you look here, time in business, to, uh, basically eight years in business. That's good. OK. Overall, this is OK. We want to bump up the credit, bump up a little bit more what they're keeping in the bank and get rid of the on deck. But this is a good first run to show you guys ca uh, our cash flow analysis. Here's a gym. All right. Now, this is. This is a better example and there's a lot, as you can see, there's a little bit more fields and we'll get into those fields. So it's a gym, the business, the entrepreneur, the owner has very, very low credit, 556. So one of the things we would do is have them work with one of our credit repair companies. Uh, and trust me, we vet our credit repair companies because a lot of people, uh, very scammy. We don't like that. We want you to actually get your credit boosted. The next thing is we can't find the business credit, which means it's probably not built, which is not a good thing. So if you look at the credits, these are the total uh, deposits, the sales. Uh, they're averaging 44,000. I'm guessing October is an unusually high month because they did take financing in October. Okay, this is more of a, you know, or thirty to forty thousand dollar business, as you can see, most other deposits were nowhere near that. Number of deposits, that's not bad. That's pretty good actually, and it's a gym, so they're averaging twenty four. Now, if you look at the average balances, column F, sixty five hundred, fifty five hundred, sixteen forty one. Now, negative for a deck, uh, for a whole month. Okay, that's not good. And now when you go on ending balance, this will show, this is that column I was telling you about. 
they end the month negative. And so what that means is if they're rolling over and they're still negative, they need to see the, the next month, the month to date to see it's positive. Okay. In here, you can see from the amount of negative days, 1, 2, 10, 17, 5, 0, 1, 3. So they were increasing, it got better, and now they're increasing again. And then the number of bounce checks, 2, 2, 3, also not good. Number of overdrafts is also high. They're averaging about 4. And so this business would not really be able to qualify for anything revenue-based, and they're not going to be able to qualify for anything credit-based because they have a 556. The only way to get them out of this is if they have a cosign, okay, that can apply for a term loan. Uh, they have good time in business, but I think what happened is they took an advance, even though it's not marked here, and the advance is killing them. We see that a lot, and that's something we always try to avoid. And also, there's good advances or good working capital lines and bad ones. So in this case, they actually took a really bad one, and it's very predatory, and that's hurting them along with their credit. So in this situation, our ideal goal Get them a term loan, get them cash in the business, get their credit up, build their business credit, and then transition them into something that's actually going to work for them, like a line of credit or an SPF. Here's a coffee shop. Okay, so both owners have 665 credit. Decent enough for a line of credit, maybe some equipment financing. Uh, the challenge is they just came out of a bankruptcy uh, in the last 12 months. And that's on my personal report. It's not on this analysis. Uh, I'm using this analysis just to kind of go over certain cash flow, certain metrics, and what you need to be doing here. Their business credit is decent at 62. If you look at their total credits, they're pretty consistent. They're averaging about 49,000, averaging tons of transactions. Okay, even though that decreased a little bit in January, they're still averaging 70 a month. Their average daily balances are in that range, which is very, very helpful. So they're at basically 30%, which is a great number to be at if you can. And uh, their ending balance is all positive and there's no negatives. So this is a great one for a line of credit or working capital. And look, they're looking to open a new location, so they need equipment. Uh, the challenge is with the bankruptcy, it's going to be next to impossible to get them equipment financing. And if you see the time in business, they've been in business 10 years. So this overall is a great business. The entrepreneurs or the, the business owners uh, had some personal issues and, and that's holding them back. But they are working with our credit repair team. And once they get that fixed, we should be in a much better position. here. Okay. Here's a cabinet business. All right. Again. Lower credit than we'd like, 646. That means it's going to be working capital, only certain types of lines of credit. Business credit is strong or strong ish at 66. Do it to credits. They're doing 330 plus every month. October was a very high month, so they're averaging 356. Number of deposits. Uh, goes from 9 to 26, but it's above 10. So line of credit, if they had better credit, would be in there. If you look at their average balances, they average 50,000. Okay, so they're keeping uh, that a little bit over 10%, right? They're keeping almost 20% in there, which is great. Now, ending balances. You can see here they actually had an issue going back in October where they ended negative. They had the negative day. And now you see overdrafts. So certain banks, they have TD Bank. Certain banks will make sure they get their overdraft fees, and TD is one of them. And so what that does is it kind of hurts how the bank statements look, and it hurts the underwriting process. Um, we were able to get them two hundred and fifty thousand. Um, and then you go down here, right? So they've been in business since twenty fifteen. They're looking for one hundred and fifty uh, to expand. And they have an ally payment, an equipment payment that's weekly, which is very unusual. Almost, I would say every equipment deal I've ever done has been monthly. So that's a little odd. But overall, not the worst. This is still a very strong business. And they're keeping up with our cash flow requirements. Now, here's one that does electronics. Uh, this is interesting. So great credit. Business credit needs some work at 46. And if you see, it looks like it's declining revenue. You never want declining revenue and 
the only thing that I would say about that is you, you want your revenue in, uh, either steady or increasing. You don't want up and down, up and down, and you definitely don't want declining, which this appears to be. Uh, number of credits is pretty good, right? They have a lot of transactions. They're averaging 30,000 a month with 42 deposits. Uh, they're keeping way too little money in the bank. So if you look, that does not even come close to our rule. Um, they're only keeping 1,300, 1,400 out of 30,000. And then if you look at the ending days, they're ending very well. Even though they don't have negatives or overdrawn, this would be hard to get equipment financing. We weren't able to get them a line of credit because they're not keeping enough money in the bank account. All right. These are big, big action items. We were able to get them an SBA loan. We are working with this client to get an SBA. If you look in business since 2017, other than not keeping enough cash in the bank, it looks solid. But that's why we go over the cash flow uh, all the time. And this is part of our strategy sessions is reviewing how the business looks. Banks do not do this. Banks are not going to show you what's good, what's bad. That's what, what, what's so important about working with the right type of company. Now, let's look at a roofing example. So roofing is definitely a little bit more up and down. So here we have 688 credit, which is just enough for the SBA. The only challenge we have is no business credit. So this could actually get declined when they run their E-Trans score, the E-Trans score is just what the SBA does in their internal model along with personal credit. And so this could be challenging in that regard. Um, if we look at their averages, they're averaging 186 and they're averaging eight deposits. Averaging eight deposits is gonna be very, very tricky to get a line of credit. So this would be a perfect candidate if it was 10 plus deposits a month on average. You look know, at the average bank balances, they are absolutely, they're keeping 62,000. So they're keeping roughly 30%. Decent ending balances, no negative names. Overall, this is a great clean file. Been in business since 19. They have a working capital line, but that's not a bad working capital line. It's actually pretty cheap. Uh, I do think that this is a good, uh, uh, this, this business would be ideal to try for an SBA loan and then get their number of deposits up and then go for a line of credit. And then last but not least, we have a sushi slash steakhouse. Very consistent in both their sales and their deposits. If you look, 45.5 uh, 45 and 150 almost every month is within a couple points of that. So very, very good. If you look at how much cash they're keeping, they're keeping in at 30 to 40 percent or more and uh so that's solid no negative days so that's solid right no no problems there uh and actually this person got a great line of credit from us i think a three-year line of credit like 14 percent if you look they won 150 we got them i think 200 on a line of credit and they have 10 years in business so this is a great example and now that you kind of see what it looks like good cash flow versus bad cash flow how much you should keep how all the accounts work and how a bank looks at it that should be your guiding principle okay keep more cash in the bank always try to be consistent have a lot of deposits and try to grow that revenue if you guys can do that all right, you're well on your way to building a great business because that cash flow is what's going to allow you to grow. It's going to allow you to spend money on marketing, add to your team, bring on new products or more inventory. That is huge. And what you want to do is when you have good cash flow and good credit, that's when you want to apply for a line of credit along with business credit cards. Because when you have all that together, uh, you can actually grow and scale at a much faster pace. And when you have that line of credit established, you use it for opportunities, short-term uses like inventory, marketing, adding to your team, supplies, and you use it for emergencies. And once that's set, you guys are good to go. So I really hope that helped you. If you guys have questions, please reach me. But that is a great rundown on the importance of cash flow and what you need to do and how you need to structure the business. All right, I will see you guys on the next one. Yeah.